You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. Imagine seeing you here. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 2nd of November 1998. We've got WWF Raw's War coming from Houston, Texas, while Nitro's live from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. WCW are gonna try and put Halloween Havoc behind them and gear up for their annual World War 3 pay per view, while the WWF has a deadly game tournament coming up at Survivor Series. Things are gonna heat up once again, so let's get started and let's check out Nitro's first 60 minutes. Shooting our loads early this week, boys. Here comes Das Wunderkind. Oh, big blood was. Nitro begins with action right away, it's Alex Wright vs Norman Smiley. During the entrances, Tony Schiavone announced a Bret Hart vs Lex Luger main event for Nitro tonight. The action begins with Alex planting Norman on the mat but Alex took his opponent lightly and Smiley answers with a crossbody. Check out Norman's body slam here, the dude was so deceptively strong. He wasn't deceptively smart though because Alex is able to poke Norman in the eye before hitting him with a running forearm. Norman was forced to watch Saturday Ride Fever while hung up in the tree of woe. In this annoyed Smiley so much that he got himself up and he pulled off a double underhook slam on Daz Wunderkind. Smiley then tried a top rope move but Alex counters with a superplex. Alex then pulls off his neckbreaker and Daz Wunderkind wins the Nitro opener. We cut over to the commentators and they're talking about Bret Hart's recent actions. Both DDP and Sting are now injured because of Bret and tonight Lex Luger wants to get some revenge. Ooh, we're getting our little intro videos out of the way quickly this week, aren't we? Disco vs Kaz Hayashi's next and the Inferno started off in control but Kaz Hayashi pulled off this twisting crossbody to the outside that knocked Disco loopy. Back inside the ropes Kaz pulled off a diving crossbody but Disco turned things around and he pulled off his second rope elbow drop. The top rope moves continued with a moonsault from Hayashi but then Mr Sonny Ono showed up and Kaz got distracted. Hayashi ends up chasing Ono around and inside the ring and of course this gives Disco a chance to hit his pile driver. Apparently this is the Macarena pile driver and the commentators refuse to call it by that name. I really don't blame them either. Booker T's back on Nitro and Mean Gene wants to know where he's been. Booker says he asked his brother to look after him a few months ago and that didn't happen. Booker got attacked before his match with Bret Hart if you remember back on the 24th of August and Booker wants to face his attacker tonight in the middle of the ring. Booker reveals that it wasn't Stevie who attacked him, it was Scott Hall, so Booker wants to go one on one with the bad guy tonight on Monday Nitro. Scott Putsky vs Fit Finley was our next match. Fit Finley is not the best wrestler in Europe but he's still better than Scott Putsky. A tombstone piledriver was enough to stop Mr Putsky and nobody cared. Raven was just about to cut one of his usual promos backstage but he was interrupted by Kenyon. Chris called Raven Mr Self Pity and Kenyon wanted to know if he was welcomed at Raven's little pity party. Raven ends up walking away from Chris and Chris tells Raven to catch a grip. Ernest Miller then headed to the ring to issue an open challenge. Scott Armstrong answers the challenge and Scotty Too Hotty thought he was being smart by attacking the cat when Miller was giving him 5 seconds to get out of the ring. It didn't take long for Miller to turn it around and Armstrong got taken out with a disaster kick. After the match the cat began choking Scott and Steve Armstrong ended up hitting the ring to help his brother out. Steve ends up getting kicked in the face too and for some reason Ernest covers Steve and the referee counted to 3. Raph destroyed Kendall Windham in the next match and as is tradition on reliving the war, here's a look at the meltdown. It would be great if they could give Raph a minute or 
or two on the mic, but I also know that's asking way too much of WCW at this point. Bret Hart, meanwhile, has no issues getting some mic time, and as the hitman comes hobbling to the ring, you just know right away that he's faking an injury. It's one of the most played out things WCW did during this time period, and everyone knows it too. Brett says that hurting people's fun and nice, but it takes its toll. Brett's got a serious groin pull, and both the doctors and Smokey the Cat aren't going to let Brett wrestle tonight, so the Lex match isn't going to happen. Mean Gene says Brett was moving around just fine backstage, and the hitman gets defensive. He says the doctors told him he can't wrestle, so he's not going to wrestle. When Mean Gene questions Brett about being the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be, Brett says he's all those things, and he's proven that by putting guys out of action like Stan and DDP. DDP shouldn't have celebrated last week until he left the ring, and as for Sting, it was Sting's idea to bring a baseball bat to Halloween Havoc, so Sting's only got himself to blame. When Brett says that Lex should consider himself lucky that he doesn't have to face his excellency tonight in the ring, the total package makes his way down the entranceway and Luger isn't buying it. Brett tells Luger to direct his questions to the doctors, but Lex says Brett's gutless and Brett's a liar. That no good total package then attacks Brett and the hitman ends up in the torture rack. Officials run down to break it up and Brett sells his injured groin on the outside. So at the moment, it looks like our main event isn't gonna happen. Next, WCW aired clips from another Ric Flair vs Hulk Hogan match, this time it was Halloween Havoc 1994, and the clips were shown as per order from Eric Bischoff. The horsemen come down to the ring after the clips play, and Arn Anderson tells it like it is. He says this has to all end with a horseman vs NWO war, but Bischoff would rather play little games and deny people what they really want to see. The enforcer says wrestling is conducted by men against men, and that's where Eric's lost. He can't understand pro wrestling because he's a child. Not only is Bischoff embarrassing Flair by showing old clips, he's also embarrassing Hulk Hogan because those two men beat the hell out of each other and it's disrespectful to use their past matches in such a petty manner. Flair says Bischoff can play all the tips he wants, but Bischoff can't walk that aisle and get any respect because Eric has never paid the price. Eric's just a little child and Eric's a punk. Flair says the horsemen are still the best thing going today before Dean Malenko announces he's going to wrestle Raven tonight. Benoit says he's going to hang back while the other horsemen set up a party at South Beach. And big Steve McMichael calls Bischoff a Shetland pony and he ends the promo with this little doozy right here. I'm going to teach y'all how to giddy up and go baby. Alright, they are the horsemen. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello Smokey, my cat. IWGP Heavyweight Champion Scott Norton takes on Van Hammer next on Nitro, the WWF kick off Raw with a Shane McMahon promo. Apparently Vince McMahon isn't at Raw tonight, but the WWF steel cage is here at Raw. The commentators have no idea why. Shane says he's acting chairman of the WWF tonight and he announces that Steve Austin will get his title shot the night after Survivor Series. Shane then welcomes Austin to the ring, but at the same time Vince McMahon shows up in his limousine. Before Austin and Shane can speak, McMahon makes it to the stage and he announces he's not going anywhere. It's wishful thinking on the fans part if they think he's gonna retire and let Shane old call the shots, so McMahon's here to bring everyone back to reality. This is just like Vince in 2023, isn't it? It. Shane smirks as the crowd chant asshole at Vince, and Vince says the day he steps down as chairman of WWF is the day he dies, and when Vince dies, he wants to go straight to hell. In saying that, Vince has been in his own living hell recently thanks to Shane and Stone Cold, so Vince is gonna take some action tonight. Shane's no longer an officer of WWF, he's been relieved of his corporate duties. If he wants to stay employed, he can be a WWF referee, and if he doesn't want to do that, then he he can join the ring crew. Vince says that Shane's not like his old man, he's more like his mother. And as for Austin, there's nothing Vince can do about the new contract, but he can make a change to that title shot that Shane just granted him. So Austin gets his opportunity at Survivor Series. Stone Cold's now part of the WWF title tournament, and in round one, Austin's gonna face the big boss man. Vince leaves and he calls the fans assholes, and that's the end of the promo. 
Looks like Vince is on a warpath tonight. He comes back out during the commercial break to rip into Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross. And Vince also announced that tonight someone's gonna pay hard time inside the steel cage. On Nitro, big boys Scott Norton and Van Hammer went at it. And not only did Van Hammer get his ass kicked by the new IWGP heavyweight champion, he also got his ass kicked by fans at ringside. Hammer got suplexed back inside the ropes and he tried to fight back with a Cobra clutch slam, but Big Norton got straight back up and Hammer went straight back down after a Samoan drop. Scott shows off his ridiculous strength with a powerbomb to Van Hammer, and Scott wins the match via pinfall. Short, sweet, and straight to the point. Backstage, Bret Hart's receiving medical attention, his groin so massive that his whole mid-region needs taped up. Perry Saturn wants a rematch against Eddie Guerrero next on Nitro. On Raw, D-Generation X take on The Brood. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Shut up. So there's still a lot of mystery surrounding The Brood and what their intentions are, but they're going to try to take down the Outlaws and X-Pac tonight on Raw. X-Pac strikes first by almost kicking Edge's head off, but Edge answers with a spine buster before slamming his little brother onto Waltman. Christian delivers a gut buster, but he's no match for the road dog's dancey punch. So in comes Edge again for more double team action. You can instantly tell that Edge and Christian have previously worked together. The match breaks down, all hell breaks loose in record time, and then the lights go out in the arena. The big red machine marches down to the ring, and that's the end of our match. Kane takes everybody out, Edge, X-Pac and Christian all take choke slams. And this is all very reminiscent of Kane's old path of destruction back in late 97 and early 98. A shame really because I was looking forward to this six man tag match. On Nitro, Saturn wants to face Eddie one on one seeing as Guerrero got help from the Latino World Order last week. The match begins and it's all Saturn, check out this top rope suplex and check out Saturn's leg drop. Swear to god this man was an absolute machine. But of course the LWO run down to help Eddie out and the match ends in disqualification. Conan then appears and he tells Saturn to back off. He explains to Perry that Eddie's doing the exact same thing that Raven did with the flock and Saturn will get another chance to take Eddie out. Saturn leaves and Conan says Eddie's not a thug, he's a, um, a punk mark buster and, and Eddie ain't rasa. Eddie says that's rich coming from Conan seeing as he runs around with the anglo punk wolf pack and gotta say fair point Eddie, fair point. Eddie says he knows the wolf pack's tactics, they're likely getting ready to beat up the LWO right now. So Eddie says Conan better watch his back. On Eddie's terms and on Eddie's turf, Conan's gonna get what's coming to him. Eddie tells Conan that he and the Wolfpack can kiss his ass before heading back up the ramp, and Conan then meets up with Alex Rodriguez just to show that he has friends in high places. Conan vs the Latino World Order makes sense though, and I hope, I really do hope, that WCW don't throw this potential feud out the window. The next match on Raw featured Draws taking on Hawk and I'm not going to give it the time of day. Hawk came out acting drunk and Draws beat the hell out of him in the middle of the ring. An absolute pathetic showing from WWF. Many people seem to forget that WWF kept their alcoholic storyline going much longer than WCW, but that doesn't make WCW any better either. It ends with officials coming down to stop the beating and Animal comes down too to shout at his old partner before he and Draws head back up the ramp. The crowd booed of course because it's an absolute dog shit storyline that incredibly gets a whole lot worse. Backstage, Vince McMahon continues his rampage. Remember last week when Michael Cole asked McMahon how he feels? Well, Vince answers that question by getting the boss man to choke Michael out. This right here is similar to how Vince felt. McMahon then gave Jim Cornette a hard time. He told him to sort out his wardrobe, tighten up his commentary and drop that 80s wrestling crap or he'll get kicked out of the WWF. A little later on, Vince also wondered if Shaquille O'Neal had a backstage pass and when Shaq told Vince he didn't have one, the chairman told him to get out of the arena. What a bastard. Next we have Al Snow and Mankind vs The Oddities on Raw while over on Nitro it's Psychosis vs Rey Mysterio Jr. 
Mick says he watched Pro Wrestling's Greatest Secrets reveal last night on TV, so he knows how to win this next match, and once again he has one word for his opponents tonight, Socko. Big Kurgan brings out a little dude love in Mick Foley, but Al Snow has no time for this kind of nonsense. Mick and Snow take the early lead and Kurgan ends up getting choked out in the corner, but when Snow tags in, Kurgan gets a little payback. Al changes strategy and he goes for the knee, he then gets his groove on a little before tagging Mick back in, but Foley goes down after a big boot and here comes Golga to feast on the carcass. The big man pulls off a stinger splash and he drops an elbow on Mankind. Kurgan comes back in to hit a sidewalk slam as Jim Ross announces that Vince McMahon's now giving Hard Finkel a hard time backstage. Foley comes back with his double arm DDT, but Mick then realizes he has a big problem when he can't find Mr. Socko. Mankind begins to panic and he ends up leaving his tag team partner high and dry to go find his little sock puppet. And while Al tries valiantly to fight these two big dudes all on his own, he ends up taking a chokeslam from Kurgan, followed by the earthquake splash from Golga. After the match, we see Mankind searching for Mr. Socko, but he's coming up short. So he says he's gonna go and talk to Vince McMahon, old Vinny Mac will know where Socko is. Before the Nitro match, Scott Steiner was getting ready to face Kenny Chaos, but JJ Dillon comes out and the match doesn't happen. It's a bit weird because nothing gets explained, but JJ tells Scott to wait up and Scott decides to go back up the ramp and go after JJ. We'll hear from Scott and Buff a little later on, but the fans in the arena were left a bit confused right here. Scott shouted that WCW sucks before heading back through the curtain beside the commentary table, and Kenny Chaos just stood by and let it all happen. Anyway, Rey Mysterio and Psychosis then came out for a match. Rey wanted to keep it on the mat to begin with, but as always, things picked up and Mysterio pulled off a very impressive Hurricane Rana that sent Psychosis out of the ring. Back in the ring, Mysterio delivered a Bronco Buster and Psychosis replied with a running powerbomb. And when Mysterio found himself on the outside, Psychosis pulled off a slingshot leg drop. Ray then got put in a chin lock, Mysterio didn't think much of this so he hit his opponent with a springboard tea bag, but he only scored a 2. A front set out suplex from Psychosis gets followed up with a top rope hurricane rana. Ray dodges a body attack though and this allows Mysterio to hit an Arabian press moonsault while Psychosis was hanging over the middle rope. Just as Ray hits a big axe factor, the LWO show up once again. Psychosis then gets the win with a top rope powerbomb. So either the LWO came out to support Psychosis or they wanted to distract Ray Mysterio. This is the beginning of the Latino World Order's main storyline by the way, so for fans who want to learn the history of the faction, you'll want to take note of this match. Chris Jericho cuts a promo next on Nitro while Steve Regal issues an open challenge on Raw. Now, the WWF were using Road Warrior Hawk to drive a storyline and Hawk was also acting wasted earlier on. William Regal, however, was actually really wasted on this night and it's extremely obvious. Regal spoke about this extensively in his book. Yeah, but a few moments, let's WWF to see if there's any real men's men. Jim Ross announces that Regal's going to be part of the Survivor Series Deadly Game Tournament and after that show, Regal was fired. He did wrestle on an episode of Shotgun Saturday Night shortly after Survivor Series, but the writing was already on the wall. Regal needed help and the good news is he would get help further down the road. Regal wanted to fight a real man's man, so Goldust comes out to answer the challenge. And man, I love William Regal in the ring and I really enjoyed his WCW stuff in 95, 96 and 97, but he's bad here. It's like watching a guy take bumps for the first time and it really sucks because we all know how good Regal can really be. I highly recommend checking out Regal's book to learn about his rise, his fall and his rise again because it does show that there's hope for those who feel they've hit the very bottom. And after reading the book, you'll look at this match in a whole different way. The man was in a real bad place, he was completely off the rails. Anyway, Marlena comes down during this match, she wants to get back with her husband, but her husband has no time for that shit because here comes the big red machine once again and we're gonna have ourselves another draw on Raw. Kane chokeslams Regal, he chokeslams Goldust, he then goes to chokeslam Marlena and Jerry Lawler says, don't do that, she's pregnant. 
To explain what's going on here, on Sunday Night Heat, Marlena told Val Venus that she's pregnant with his baby, and Venus said that that's Marlena's problem. So here you've got Kane about to chokeslam a pregnant woman in the middle of the ring. Officials are able to stop Kane, but it comes at a price. Tony Guerrero ends up getting chokeslammed instead, so you know what, that's a fair trade off, who cares. How many more DQs are we gonna have on Raw tonight though? Here's a look at the Deadly Game Tournament brackets. You'll see that The Undertaker and Kane have been given a pass into the quarterfinals. This was done because McMahon wanted the brothers to face each other in the ring, but it begs the question, doesn't it? Why not just put them in a first round match? I'm guessing they wanted to be careful with pay per view runtime, unlike WCW. You'll also notice a few other things. Triple H is back in action at Survivor Series. Mankind has a mystery opponent. In X Pac, Al Snow, Jeff Jarrett, and Goldust are also taking part in this deadly game tournament. On Nitro, Chris Jericho also brings up the greatest secrets of pro wrestling TV show that aired the night before on NBC, but Chris says he's gonna let everyone in on another secret. Chris has respect for Goldberg. Goldberg's a great champion, almost as great as Jericho himself, and the rivalry Chris has with Bill is now water under the bridge. From one champion to another, Chris respects Goldberg and he wishes Bill the best in his future endeavours. Jericho then begins a Goldberg chant while losing his mind, so there you go, it's all good between the Ayatollah and the world champ. Great stuff. On Raw, Mankind meets up with Vince McMahon while searching for Mr. Socko, but McMahon has something else for Mick Foley, something pretty special. Vince wants Mankind to promise he won't get involved in the next match if he wants his little present, and Mick says he won't interfere. Vince then presents Mankind with the new WWF Hardcore title belt, and Vince says Mick has earned the right to be the company's first ever Hardcore Champion. Vince then says that he lost the son this past week, but he might have gained a new one in Mick Foley. So it appears that Vince has developed a soft spot for Mankind while going on a warpath with everyone else. Foley says, thanks dad, and this makes Vince stop in his tracks before he wheels his ass out of the room. It's The Rock vs Ken Shamrock next on Raw, while Nitro presents a Raven vs Dean Malenko match. During the commercial break, McMahon was having words with Ken Shamrock and he didn't want any cameras around during this meeting. And when the match got underway, McMahon came out to make another announcement. Seeing as Vince has a problem with the people, he has a problem with the people's champion. So if Rock doesn't win the IC title in this next matchup, he's gonna get removed from the deadly game tournament at Survivor Series. The match gets underway and McMahon watches from the stage. The crowd chants Shamrock sucks while Kenny Boy gets the better of Rock. And for the majority of the match, The Rock had his work cut out for him. Kenny seemed to enjoy the negative reaction while Vince McMahon enjoyed seeing The Rock get destroyed, but the crowd exploded when Rock fired back with a clothesline and Shamrock had to quickly regain his advantage. So Rock takes a Hurricane Rana followed by a belly to belly suplex and Rock gets put in the ankle lock. The Great One makes it to the bottom rope, Vince doesn't look too happy and McMahon gets concerned when the two start trading moves back and forth. A neck breaker from Rock, a power slam from Shamrock, Rock tries to win it with his float over DDT but Ken kicks out and then the referee takes a bump. Shamrock takes this opportunity to grab a steel chair but he ends up smacking himself when the chair bounces off the top rope. Rock then hits the people's elbow as the people go crazy but there's there's no referee to award Rock the victory. So the Rock goes over to the referee and he tries to wake him up. Shamrock smacks Rock with that steel chair across the back and Rock wins via disqualification. Vince says that Rock didn't win the Intercontinental Championship so he's no longer the number one contender. Rock has been removed from the deadly game tournament and Rock's now known as the People's Champ. After a commercial break, we see The Rock backstage and he's pretty upset. Rock's looking for Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon tells police officers that Rock just made a threat on his life. McMahon wants The Rock arrested and he wants Rock removed from the arena. Over on Nitro, I'm gonna be very honest here, I really would have been looking forward to this match 3 or 4 months ago, but I'm not a fan of how Raven's been booked ever since the flock broke up. He gives Dean a free shot at the opening bell and Dean's more than happy to take it. So Raven gets his ass kicked for the first portion of the bout. He keeps offering Malenko free shots and Dean ends up asking the referee what's up with this guy. Eventually Raven hits a low blow on Dean and he then begins biting Malenko's nose. Now this is more like it. The two then tumble out of the ring and Raven gets joined by Lodi, but Steve McMichael comes out and he whips Lodi with his belt, leaving Dean and Raven alone to continue their fight. 
Back in the ring, Raven performs the chair drop toe hold and Malenko sells it brilliantly. Now with a bit more confidence, Raven lands a suplex before wedging another chair between the top and middle turnbuckles. He then counters a sleeper with a back suplex but it's Raven who ends up getting thrown into that steel chair. Malenko then sets Raven up for a cloverleaf and Canyon runs down to help out. Raven does end up getting out of the hold and he has a chance to win via pinfall but Dean kicks out and that's pretty much where our match ends. Chris Benoit comes out to get rid of Canyon but Bret Hart follows Chris and the hitman launches an attack. Remember, Bret wanted Benoit to join the NWO and Benoit refused, so it's another callback on Nitro which is actually a good thing. So Bret isn't hurt, he tries to break Benoit's arm while Canyon hits Malenko with a flatliner to end this match in disqualification. Lex Luger then runs down and Bret gets in the ring. Bret's now feeling a bit rough and his injuries clearly playing up a bit, so the giant shows up to pull Bret out of the ring. Lex then gets challenged by the big man, so the giant is going to take Bret's place in tonight's main event. That's a… Uh, <laughs> I'll just say it, that's a downgrade. The in-ring portion of the Malenko vs Raven match was good though, I was wrong to assume it would play out like Raven's other recent matches, but I'm still not into Raven being on this losing streak. We've got Val Venus vs Jeff Jarrett next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Chris Jericho vs Billy Kidman for Chris's TV title. Val's apparently telling everyone that he's not the father of Terry Runnels' kid so he's all up for banging Steve McMichael's wife, but Jarrett makes sure that that doesn't happen tonight. Not much to say here, the commentators talked about the steel cage hanging above the ring while wondering who's gonna serve hard time tonight. Jarrett hits a DDT, Venus replies with a spine buster, Double J goes down after a Russian leg sweep, and Jim Ross says that Debra has a lot of money and he has a good idea how she ended up being so wealthy. The pettiness was off the charts during this era guys. Val Venus goes up for the money shot but the blue blazer shows up and yay it's another DQ on raw. I know disqualifications are necessary but they aren't unavoidable. I mean why not have the blue blazer just attack Venus after the match you know? Anyway it looks like the blue blazer and Jeff Jarrett have formed some sort of partnership. This isn't the first time the blazers helped out double J. Over on Nitro, the TV title match gets underway with a clothesline that takes the champ by surprise. Chris then brings it to the mat with a side headlock, but Kidman gets up to perform an arm drag followed by a dropkick. Jericho then unceremoniously dumps Kidman out of the ring before ramming the challenger's head into the ring steps. Tony Schiavone reminds us that a match used to end if a wrestler was purposely tossed out of the ring and yeah, those were some dark days. Jericho pulls off a vertical suplex, his cocky pin only gets a 2, so Kidman takes a few knife edge chops before firing back with a clothesline. Jericho then hits Kidman with a flapjack before applying a backbreaker submission on the challenger. Kidman gets punished in the corner before Chris takes the disguise. The TV champ wastes too much time and Kidman gets a boot up. An atomic drop from Billy gets followed up with a corner tornado DDT. Kidman then performs his sit out spine buster, but he can't put the champ away. A victory roll gets countered with a lion tamer attempt but Chris decides to catapult Kidman instead and this gets followed up with a German suplex. You're seeing it again folks, Billy Kidman's having the best match on Nitro. We see the powerbomb facebuster counter and Kidman then goes up for the shooting star. The landing is a bit rough and Jericho is able to drive an elbow into Kidman's midsection, so the match continues on. Chris goes for the land tamer again but Billy counters with a pen attempt. Kidman then launches a vicious attack in the corner and Chris decides to take a timeout, but Kidman keeps the pressure on with a plancha. Kidman then goes up for a top rope crossbody but the bell sounds and we've got a time limit draw. Rather than the crowd flat out booing the finish though, you can hear folks applauding the two competitors and this is good to see. It was a good match and I do agree the TV time limit draws are slightly overdone but let's look at this match as a positive. Next on Raw, it's the Headbangers vs Dilo and Mark Henry. On Nitro, JJ Dillon explains the Scott Steiner business from earlier on. So the winners of this tag team match gets a shot at the Outlaws tag team titles at Survivor Series. The Headbangers are out here as the puppy dog jerky James and dumbass rockabilly and the Headbangers still believe that they're the true WWF tag team champions. Mosh is all over Dilo at the opening bell. It started off really well for the Headbangers but Thrasher then injures his knee when coming off the middle rope. It's a minor injury and Thrasher would be back in action in a few weeks but you can see him gritting his teeth and getting on with the match afterwards while hobbling around the 
ring. Mosh ends up tagging in to give his partner a break and when Dilo sends Jerky James to the outside there's nothing Thrasher can do to help really. Quick tags allow Dilo and Henry to stay in the driver's seat and just as Dilo lands an elbow drop, Jim Ross announces that the cops are looking for the rock in the locker room. Eventually Mosh has to tag out so the headbangers can go through the usual hot tag routine and fair play to dumbass rockabilly, he gets in there and he tries his best to do his job. Mosh rushes back in to help his partner suplex Big Mark Henry, and just when Thrasher hits Mark with a plancha, the lights go out and Kane's music plays in the arena. Uh, again, let's look at the positives and look at this from a storyline perspective. So try this, Kane and Paul Bear went on the path of destruction back in 97 and early 98. It's all that Kane knew when he debuted. He then got his matches with The Undertaker, he then joined forces with The Undertaker, and the brothers went on their own path of wrecking everything inside and everybody who stood in their way. Now Kane has been abandoned, he doesn't have Paul and he doesn't have his brother, and the only thing he knows to do is go on another path of destruction all on his own because it's the only thing that worked for him in the past. I know, I'm stretching like Stu Hart here on a good day, but we gotta grab something out of these constant DQ finishes or I'm just gonna whinge about it. Speaking of whinging, James J. Baby Dylan says that Scott Steiner's out of control and he's been fined 100 grand while Buff Bagwell gets away with a 50 grand fine. The two NWO guys then go to attack Dylan and the whole commentary team along with JJ run away. A wise decision indeed. Buff and Scott get in the ring and Scott says WCW sucks, no one can control the rage of Scott Steiner and Dylan can find Scott all he wants, it doesn't matter. Scott then tells Dylan to send anyone he wants to the ring, including Commissioner Roddy Piper. This skirt wearing queer on Square Street and liking it! Buff grabs the microphone because Scott's clearly losing his marbles here and Buff says that this isn't Kenny Chaos's fault. Kenny just got caught up between two brothers so Mr. Chaos should come down for a chat. You'd have to be either brave or stupid to walk down to that ring and yes, Kenny Chaos is one brave man. He gets in the ring wearing his six slides and he gets attacked. Of course he gets attacked. Apparently Rick Steiner isn't here so Kenny gets put in the recliner. Scott reminds fans again that WCW sucks and the NWO do what they want when they want. Steiner was definitely way more unhinged tonight, more so than normal, and again it's a case of hoping WCW remember to keep things like this going because god knows they've struggled with overall continuity in 1998. There's been a few good callbacks this week with Booker T talking about his attack and Bret Hart going after Chris Benoit, so I'm hoping they remember to keep other little bits and pieces in mind moving forward. It sounds so basic I know, but it's remarkable how WCW have dropped the ball recently with these small simple things. Scott Hall faces Booker T next on Nitro, on Raw it's a Dan Severn and Owen Hart promo. The cops have arrested The Rock, the people's champs go into the people's jail and the great one doesn't seem too happy about it. Vince McMahon however is absolutely delighted. We see a replay of the Owen Hart pile driver to Dan Severn as Owen gets in the ring. Owen says he's here by request of Dan Severn and he says again that the pile driver was an accident. He apologised for it and he did the honourable thing by removing himself from WWF. Owen then wants Dan to come to the ring so this can all get sorted out, and the beast makes his entrance while wearing a neck brace. Severn says he's not here for an apology, it wouldn't mean anything anyway. Dan says Owen isn't fooling anyone anyway because Hart hasn't retired, he's been running around lately as the blue blazer. Severn says that Owen stole his livelihood, Owen is nothing but scum, and at this moment Owen's hard enough so he shoves Severn to the mat before nailing Dan with a clothesline. Steve Blackman then comes out to chase Owen away and and you better leave the ring when Big Stevie Cool comes knocking. So Owen dodges any serious harm while shouting at the entranceway that he's retired. After a commercial break, Blackman watches as Severn gets loaded into an ambulance, and Blackman then delivers a devastating mudvug kick to Owen, who just so happened to also be watching Severn get put in the ambulance. Just then, the blue blazer shows up and Owen kicks Stevie right in the balls while the blazer applies a dragon sleeper. The commentators are confused, Blackman's balls are confused, and now we've got to work out who's really wearing that blue blazer outfit. Over on Nitro, Scott Hall conducts his survey. The fans are here to see the NWO, but not the Black and White Express. They want to see the Wolf Pack. Booker T makes his entrance. The bad guy attacks before the bell rings, but Booker runs into Scott with his signature forearm before dropping Hall across the top rope. 
The match resets. The two lock up. Booker takes a back elbow, so he smacks the taste out of Hall's mouth. Scott then takes a clothesline, and Booker hits a back elbow of his own, and Booker slows the pace down with an arm bar. The commentators talk about how good Booker looks here. It looks like he's put on a bit of muscle mass as he hits Scott with a heel kick. Scott's able to counter a crossbody with his signature fallaway slam, and Booker gets his head rocked with a corner clothesline. Booker comes back with an axe kick. He follows this up with a spinning back kick. He goes upstairs to finish the match, but Hull pulls Billy Silverman in, and the referee takes a bump. Charles Robinson comes down to call for a disqualification as Booker counters an outsider's edge attempt. And my god, it's EQ City this week, guys. What, what can you do? Solid enough in ring action, but there wasn't enough of it. Still, to take a few positives out of this one too, it's good that WCW have dropped the alcohol storyline, and it's good to have Booker T back on Nitro. Someone's gonna serve hard time in the steel cage to end Raw while the giant takes on Lex Luger, so Raw doesn't have a traditional main event this week. The cage gets lowered and Vince comes to the ring with his stooges and the boss man. He's being a real dick here, telling Patterson, Briscoe and Slaughter exactly where to put his wheelchair while being very pushy. He tells his stooges to get inside the ring and check it out along with the big boss man. The guys have to make sure that the cage is set up correctly and no one can escape. Once all four men are inside, Vince says some of his superstars deserve to spend some hard time. McMahon then tells the boss man to attack Patterson, Briscoe and Slaughter, and the boss man happily obliges. It's a vicious assault here with McMahon screaming orders at the boss man. He says the Stooges left him all alone two weeks ago when all he wanted was a cup of coffee, so McMahon blames the Stooges for Austin holding him hostage. McMahon demands that these three show their allegiance if they want the beating to stop, but even when the men beg for mercy, the boss man continues to decimate them. McMahon then tells the boss man to remove the Stooges' clothing, that's a, that's a bit weird. But Stone Cold Steve Austin runs down, not because he wants to help the Stooges, he just wants to get his hands on the boss man. We get more carnage as Stone Cold goes after the big boss man and eventually Pat Patterson. Shane McMahon gets in the cage and the boss man looks to Vince for some instruction, but McMahon tells boss man to leave. Looks like the chairman showing a little compassion. Shano, however, flips his dad off, so good lad. The Undertaker's theme music then plays in the arena, the dead man's here along with Paul Bear, and he goes right after Stone Cold inside the cage while the boss man and the Stooges get out of harm's way. The crowd goes nuts for Austin and Taker, but Undertaker forgot that someone else is out to get him. The lights go out and Kane makes his entrance while setting fire to the cage, and Raw goes off the air with Kane and Austin joining forces to beat up the Undertaker. I usually don't mind Raw ending without a match, but I don't know about this ending to be honest. I think because the company have ended Raw so well over the past few weeks that this one kind of stands out as a bit of a flop. This was all about developing the Mr. McMahon character a little more, and yeah, he's one sadistic individual, definitely. On Nitro, we've got the Jan vs Lex Luger and not Bret Hart vs Lex Luger. It's a match that you can play out in your head, but it's the main event, so let's check it out. The two have a little pose down before the action gets underway. Jan brings it to the corner and Flexi Lexi counters with a few punches. The Jan then pulls off a big boot and yeah, you guessed it, it's all the Jan from now until the final moments of the match. Jan goes low with a headbutt, he gives Lex a big old slap on the chest, Lex gets choked out before taking a Russian leg sweep, and the big man poses again for the audience. Tie-dye guy absolutely loved it. The giant bullies Lex, he steps on Lex, he stands on Luger's throat. Lex gets thrown from corner to corner and man, the crowd is so, so quiet. In comparison to Raw, it's like night and day. Lex continues to take a beating, punches, shoves. These two fans in the audience decide to leave early for crying out loud, so please Lex, begin the comeback so we can wrap this up. Jan pushes Lex around and yay, Lex has had enough, there it is. Multi <laughs> multiple clotheslines stun the big man, we have seen this spot before. Jan goes for a choke slam, but the total package counters with a jawbreaker and the crowd finally get loud when Lex body slams the giant. This was pretty awesome. Lex signals for the rag, but here comes comes Bret Hart holding a guardrail. Bret wants to injure another WCW babyface as he goes to work on Lex's knee, and things don't look good for poor Lex as Bret applies a sharpshooter. 
just then Bill Goldberg runs down for the save and Brett lets go of his hold. The world champ lines up a spear but Brett moves out of the way and Lex takes all the impact. Nitro then fades the black and there you have it. Not a great main event but I wouldn't call the last 10 minutes of Raw all that great either. Nitro wins reliving the war this week. The amount of DQs and non finishes on both shows was absolutely comical, but I found Nitro more entertaining. Scott Steiner going insane is always fun to watch. Kidman and Jericho had a good match. I enjoyed seeing Booker T back in action, and I know it's gonna lead to nothing, but this new violent Bret Hart's been pretty fun to watch too on Nitro. Nobody really talks about this and what it could have become. I missed Raw having a regular main event this week and I wasn't a big fan of the whole steel cage thing to close out the show. I thought Shamrock vs Rock was good and I enjoyed Mr McMahon being so evil, but Nitro was just better this week in my opinion. Raw's on 75 points, Nitro's on 65 and we've got 18 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw won with a 4.8 while Nitro scored a 4.1. Next week on Nitro, the Wolfpack challenge the black and white to a main event showdown. Eddie Guerrero offers Rey Mysterio a spot in the LWO before the two lock horns, and Rick Steiner has a new surprise tag team partner. I wonder who it could be. Raw opens up next week with an Undertaker vs X-Pac match. We've got Ken Shamrock meeting Mankind in the middle of the ring once again, and The Rock gets another chance to compete in the Deadly Game Tournament. So I hope you join me again next week. Thank you so much for watching Reliving the War, and please take care. A big boss man is law, order, and justice of the World Wrestling Federation. And that is my job. If you ever take a trip down the